The most serious theme that anyone can make a movie about has to be the nature of reality. What if no one is good? What if dishonesty and immorality is just a part of everyone? And in spite of all this, is there still hope and trust that can still be reached in people? These are the questions that Rashomon is based on. For over the past 60 years, people from all over the world have called Rashomon a great movie. In fact, it's so famous that the title itself has become its own dictionary word. It's used to describe something being characterized by multiple conflicting or differing versions of a story. Numerous American TV shows, sitcoms, science fiction adventures, cartoons have all had a Rashomon episode. Come on, Japan will be fun. You like Rashomon? That's not how I remember it. This is where you get the same series of events, except it's remembered differently by various characters. In spite of the fire, I had everything under control. And then Batman showed up and bungled everything. Lucky I was there to save his butt. But Rashomon is the first to ever pull this off. The title Rashomon translates to Main City Gate. The title itself has become a part of popular culture. There's a term called Rashomon Effect, and this refers to when different people have different perspectives of the same thing or event. The film is actually based on a short story called In a Grove. The film is actually pretty similar to the book, the only difference is the order in which it's told. Rashomon released in 1950, and it was directed by the legendary Akira Kurosawa. The cinematography was done by the excellent Kazuo Miyagawa, and like most of Kurosawa's films, it stars Toshiro Mifune. This film is often credited as the sole reason why the Academy created the best foreign film category. And this is actually the first film where Kurosawa was nominated for an Oscar. If you ask me though, he should have won an Oscar for every single one of his films. Hollywood sucks. So to sum up Rashomon, it's basically a feudal Japan court case movie. And if that doesn't already make you want to see it, then there's no hope for you. Rashomon is a story within a story within a story. It begins with two men, a priest and a woodcutter. They're taking shelter from a storm at the Rashomon Gate to Kyoto. They were all discussing how messed up the world is. And it's even brought up how there's no hope and no truth in the world. Everything is a lie. <laughs> a beggar is then seen from the outside and he runs into the frame to join the two men. The beggar represents us, the audience, being introduced to this story. He overhears the priest and the woodcutter recounting the recent events related to a crime, and they're discussing different pieces to the puzzle. Basically, a bandit is accused of murdering a samurai and raping his wife. There's multiple witnesses of the event, and we watch each one of them appear before the court and tell their different versions of the story. The only problem though is that all four witnesses tell different stories that all contradict themselves. And what do you do when you're looking for the truth but all the sources say something different? It's honestly just like now where we get different news medias and outlets and they all tell different versions of the same event. Who can you really believe when all the sources are different? And this breaks the very system of what we use to find truth. And that's what they call the Rashomon effect, thus creating one of cinema's most thought-provoking and timeless films. You take that, one takes that as truth. But in this film, you take it as truth and then you find out that it is not necessarily true. So just like in all of Kira Kurosawa's films, the cinematography is incredible. It's done in a way where the story is told visually. There's scenes where there's no words spoken, yet you know exactly what's going on just by the characters' expressions, the camera angles, and camera movements. For example, there's this scene right here. It has no words yet. You know what the bandit's thinking, and you know what's going to happen. 
This scene is acted and shot so perfectly. In fact, Kurosawa himself stated that this is the scene he's most proud of of making in his entire career. If a film is going to be all talking, it might as well just be radio or podcast. A true film tells a story visually, and that's what makes Rashomon such a classic. This film is worth seeing just for the visuals alone. It's very dreamlike, you'll get visuals of forests and nature. You'll also never forget the look of the grove. It's very enchanting but desolate, and it's also anxiety inducing. It's hard to explain, but this is where everything happens. It's where all the violence and chaos in the story takes place. The film is also filled with expert camera work and angles. My favorite shot is when the camera shoots up from under the trees to reveal the sun trying to peek through the leaves. This is also supposed to be the first film where a camera is pointed directly at the sun. Probably the reason why Kira Kurosawa went blind later in life. When trying to shoot the scenes in the forest, even during noon, it was still too dark. Instead of using a regular foil reflector, Kurosawa and Miyagawa used a full-length mirror which was taken from a costume department. The crew bounced light from a mirror, drew leaves and trees to soften it and make it look more like natural sunlight. Miyagawa would later go on to say that this is the most successful lighting effect he had ever done. There's also a very early use of the handheld camera technique. This is seen when the camera follows the characters closely through the woods. These camera angles aren't just used because they look good, they represent symbolism in the story being told. Kurosawa apparently asked Toshiro Mifune, who plays a bandit, to model his character's movements after wildlife, particularly a lion. Kurosawa's vision of how a lion was supposed to move was heavily influenced by some wildlife documentaries he had watched just before this. If any character in this film could be Kurosawa's spokesperson, I think it would have to be the priest. For one, the priest is an optimist. He's also a sentimentalist and has a general acceptance of everything. He'll say things like, well, that's how the world is, or the world is like that. Anyone who can understand the questioning of reality that goes on wouldn't be the woodcutter or beggar, so by default, it's the priest. And if Kurosawa does have a spokesperson, and I believe every director has a spokesperson in their films, it would have to be the priest. It's also worth noting that Kurosawa bases most of his films off of events that are relevant to the time. Yojimbo, for example, was a commentary about the rise in the free market and consumerism in 60s Japan. In 1950, when this film was released, it was right after Japan lost the war and perhaps a lot of Japanese were feeling lied to at the time by their own government. They were probably questioning the war and if it was even necessary. Also, what were they fighting for and now what were probably the questions being asked at the time. There was really no more trust in judging what was right or wrong. Also, I'm not really sure what the significance is, but this film uses triangles in the number three a lot. Like right here, we had this shot where it's a triangle within a triangle. There's also three different settings to the story. The Rashomon Gate, the forest, and the courtyard. The crime itself has three people involved. Also, there's three people under the Rashomon Gate. And each set of three is an unstable triangle. The forest itself is symbolic of a place of darkness where light and truth can't penetrate. The light trying to shine through the leaves symbolizes two major conflicts of the film. Is there good people and can we really trust anyone? The light itself casts shadows of doubt on the viewer. Everything we learned in the flashbacks could be wrong. We are only seeing what the eyewitnesses say they saw. It's like a light trying to penetrate through the branches, the truth just doesn't come out. The Rashomon Gate represents the search for truth, it's basically falling apart. The beggar is even seen tearing it apart. This represents himself giving in to the darkness with the lack of honesty and good people in the world. The pillars represent the morality holding everything up, but later we see it falling down. 
One cool bit of trivia is the rain itself is actually artificial. Black ink was used to make it show up on a black and white film. There's even a scene where we could see the ink briefly on the woodcutter's forehead. The rain itself could represent natural disasters and corruption in this world. So now I'm gonna be getting into spoilers. If you still haven't seen this film, please watch it. Everyone gets something different out of it and my own interpretation probably won't be the same as yours. When the wife is seen being sexually assaulted, we watch her look up at the light but it's being blocked by the branches. We then see her give up and her light goes out. The light and shadows are symbols of just the eternal conflict between morality being light and the darkness which is the corruption. The opening scene where we see the destroyed temple and the woodcutter and priest are sitting hunched over in the rain, we see that they're depressed about the world and this is symbolic of Japan after horrifically losing the war. They're just left in the rubble wondering how and when and if they'll ever pick themselves up and who truly is responsible for this. And they're now living in a world full of uncertainty. The third setting of the film takes place in the courtroom and here we see sunlight and it's outdoors. Yet if you look, there's a shadow cast on every single one of the witnesses. This is a shadow of doubt. The characters face us. We never see the judges, so we're the judges. And it's up to us to decide who's lying and who's telling the truth. The entire film questions whether good people really exist in this world. Everyone in the film is basically corrupted in some way or another. The fact that everyone would lie about a story just to make themselves look better states just how people naturally choose what they want to believe. At the end, we see the beggar and he robs an abandoned child and then runs off. He states that the only way to survive in this fallen world is to be selfish. This shows a very pessimistic view of the world and just how broken and full of lies it is. And the only way to survive is just to think of yourself. The woodchopper, however, represents the opposite. And he actually chooses to adopt the abandoned child. The rain then suddenly stops and the sun peeks through. This option represents choosing to live life no matter how fallen the world is or what the problems of the world may be. You still have to be a good person. You still have to act courageously and charitably. The woodchopper then walks off towards the camera and he's carrying the abandoned baby. And this leaves us with this feeling full of hope. At the end, we the audience are given the option whether to agree with the beggar and his selfish view of the world or the woodchopper, the more optimistic and full of hope option of the world. The genius of this film is the fact that it lets us, the audience, decide what the answer is. And this is no doubt a message geared towards Japan at the time. Should they just live selfishly like the beggar and just focus on their hardships, giving in to a cynical world? Or should they act like the woodchopper and just keep moving on, taking care of one another, and being charitable. It's also not really a question relevant just to Japan after World War II. It also applies to today. The world now is filled with lies and fake news and it's to the point where we don't know the truth. This ending to this film is perhaps one of the most powerful moments in any Kurosawa film. And every time I watch it, I can't help but tear up a little bit. It's mostly just because it fills me full of hope. In the end, this film doesn't give a definite answer to what it's all about and each viewer is going to come out with a different interpretation. Apparently when this was being filmed, the cast approached Kurosawa and they had the script and asked him, what does it all mean? The answer Kurosawa gives, and it's also in his biography, is that Rashomon is a reflection of life. And life doesn't always have clear meanings. Each time you rewatch it, you'll see new details that will change your view of what really happened. If you think the last story is the answer, then I ask you to look at the woodcutter's face and just closely look at his expression when the nobleman's wife is talking. Also keep in mind that everything we hear from the witnesses is from the point of view of the woodcutter. 
So it's all coming from one source. I went from thinking I knew who was telling the truth to completely just changing my mind and believing a different account. This is what true genius of filmmaking is all about, and this is why this is such a timeless classic. Truly an incredible film, and everyone anywhere needs to watch this. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to donate to the channel's Patreon to help it grow. Thank you.